So what do we what do we have this week, guys? We got some some cool stuff happened this week. Uh, nothing. There's nothing. That's nothing. Yep. Nothing. That's it. Thanks Absolutely for the show, nothing. everyone. Thanks. <laughs> well, why don't I start? I think one nothing of the biggest news of the week for me is that uh, now hear me out because I think I actually called this on the show uh, last year when I was driving around Boca Chica. I remember saying, guys, I can't help but notice there's an awful lot of oil rigs around here. And I wouldn't be surprised if they end up launching Starship from a giant oil rig platform. If I didn't say that on the show, I definitely said it <laughs> in person to people because it just made a lot of sense. Boca Chica is right next to like some mega shipyards right there. Like big, mm -hmm. you know, where they, where they build those huge, huge oil rigs and they ship them out. And come to find out, here we go. Space, this is from Mr. Elon Musk. Uh, well, actually, it started off SpaceX fleet, Gavin from SpaceX fleet, who kind of helps, uh, you know, share all of the things that are water based for SpaceX said SpaceX is hiring for offshore operation engineers in Brownsville from the post work as part of a team of engineers and technicians to design and build and operate an offshore rocket launch facility. Um, yeah. And then thanks to Cowboy Dan Pash for the scoop as well. Um, and so Elon confirmed that SpaceX is building floating super heavy class spaceports for Mars, Moon, and hypersonic travel around Earth. So there we go. And this shouldn't be too big of a surprise because don't forget their old, um, I think he maybe even commented on it somewhere, but you know, the old video used to show um, the right. super heavy and Starship launching from a sea platform. You're like, talking about the, uh, the point to point travel. I exactly. seem to remember that one was like off in the. Yeah. Yep. So um, let's see, I, I don't remember at some point he confirmed basically that, you know, we could take boats out there. Um, someone asked, are we going to expect Starship and launch landing ship assembly in Brownsville or Port Isabel? And Elon said, not sure. They're pretty close together. So I think they're pretty in the initial, you know, phase of this. It's not like this is totally hashed out, but I think it just means they officially, you know, internally said, yes, we are going to be pursuing this. We are going to build and operate a super heavy class sea-based launch platform. Um, I don't remember if Elon went on to say, to talk about it, but somewhere he kind of went on to, um, to say that it was only going to be, you know, not, not sure how far out he said it needs to be quite a ways away, I think, but um, let's see if this goes into it. I don't remember how to do all this, <laughs> you know, cause <laughs> Twitter, so Twitter, Twitter doesn't ever make sense. Like you can't just see just the replies of like Elon and, um, oh, he, so here I asked Elon, um, please tell me we can still get close enough to see the, see them launch. Cause like, you know, this will be, this will be starship on the super heavy booster. This will be the biggest rocket to ever fly. And if it's going out into the ocean, 20, 30 miles or something, sorry, uh, 40 to 60 kilometers, basically like you're not going to see it from land. Like mm -hmm. how, uh, you know, yeah. <laughs> what? Well, what? and yeah, and I just said it'll be such a shame if we can't see, can't get a giant crowd gathering to witness history. And Elon said, we need to be far enough away so as not to bother heavily populated areas. The launch and landing are not subtle, but you can mm -hmm. get within a few miles of the spaceport in a boat. So I guess we're going to have to get a press boat. <laughs> so, <laughs> so there's actually is... that mega yacht company that has these, like, uh, I think they're hydrogen fuel cell powered yachts. So <laughs> there you go. They're only like $13 million each, so set up that Patreon. <laughs> it's the cost of the Super Heavy. <laughs> yeah, seriously. So that's I think that's the biggest news, but honestly, like I said, we kind of, in a way, totally saw this coming. Um, mm -hmm. But it sounds like it's just actually being starting to be hashed out now. What do you guys but think? So does this mean that the only places they can land are on the water? Land or launch from like the only point to point travels from like port cities. I mean, it might be. Yeah. Well, otherwise you're flying over populated areas, right? Right. I mean, would that I think, be the case I mean, anyways? I think eventually, uh, you know, I'm, I'm guessing eventually this means, um, you know, if they have enough data and they prove it to be safe enough and they're getting to like, you know, anywhere, in, you know, or somewhere close to airline or like safety, maybe they can start launching and landing in more remote areas, you know, like, mm -hmm. um, you know, say you're in Denver, Colorado, and you could go out, you know, a, a little ways east where there's just not heavily populated areas, get away from the big cities, you know, something like that, maybe, like but where, still the, 
the like noises. where the airport is now. Yeah, where the airport <laughs> never is now. Yeah, <laughs> but there's still. I mean, it's going to be loud. Yeah. Like one of the loudest things ever. As your video mentioned, Joe, like the Saturn V was no, one the, of the, the loudest. The water thing. Like I always knew that that was there to kind of suppress the the impact or whatever. I didn't realize that it was a sound thing. Like the actual sound could melt the concrete. Yes. And that's why they douse it with so much water to, yes. to keep that from happening. Yes. Wow. That's insane. I mean, just the thought of sound melting something is, is well, nuts. And sound can, yeah, the reflection of it can bounce back and destroy mm-hmm. the rocket. Mm-hmm. You know, that actually mm-hmm. happened with the space shuttle, basically. They didn't realize the the acoustics of those solid rocket boosters was so strong in the very first you know, on STS one that it actually kind of damaged. There's this, there's this kind of this tail. It's not the tail fin, not like the vertical tail fin, but underneath like the engines, there's this like flap mm-hmm. and it actually damaged that to the point where it couldn't extend all the way. And there are some real concerns that it wasn't going to be able to survive reentry because it wouldn't have full control hmm. and they didn't know this, <laughs> uh, I guess, but um yeah, yeah there, there's a there's a part of me that really wishes i could have seen a shuttle launch because those solid rocket <sighs> boosters are just monsters Absolute like every time i watch one of those launches beast. now i'm just like god it's just i know so much D- tim did, uh, did they know so up in out in la near me they have one is it discovery um yeah and it's a, a shuttle and or no 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 it's a endeavor endeavor, endeavor. Is discovery's at center. kennedy space center then no discovery's at in it's dc Atlantis. Oh, yeah, Atlantis. Okay, is whatever. That. I've seen two of them. Okay, um, and they at the California Science Center, the one out here that they uh, have Endeavor. Mm-hmm. They're they're going to be mounting it vertically. Mm-hmm. Um, and right now it's flat inside of a hangar. And mm-hmm. so, talking to the guys there, it's actually really cool because you can get super close to all mm-hmm. these parts and all these bits. And I think when it's when it is vertical, right? I think you told me they're gonna have like this spiraling thing around it. You can go see, mm-hmm. but still, it's just kind of a unique moment right now. But outside, they have, it's not a booster, but it's like the fuel tank. I guess it's yep. the big orange thing. Yep, the external fuel tank. Yeah, yeah, it's so yep. cool, man. And yeah, it's massive. Yeah, and the boosters they'll be using were actually flown boosters, you know, because they don't forget they retrieve the boosters from the ocean for the space shuttle program. Oh. So California Science Center will have flown boosters, a flown orbiter, but of course the external fuel tank isn't flown because they it reentered and discarded. So, but it was I, I believe it was a flight article though that just didn't fly. You know, one yeah. that was kind of you can go leftover. look at it now. It's just sitting out there. It's, yeah, and like sun fading really bad and getting yeah, and, it's it's kind of second fiddle to you know the shuttle inside of the hangar right there, which is like yeah. air conditioned and <laughs> yeah, you know. Nice. Um, it's going to be amazing that when they stack that and build a whole building around it. I mean, that will be the yeah. one to see then, honestly. And and it's right there at the Coliseum, so it's kind of cool. Um, anyway, so with all that, does with 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 the the la- the water launches? I assume no one's ever done that before. But the thing I'm curious about is how do you make it stable? Or because I imagine like you know, uh, I think your video about why they roll and stuff and how precise every little maneuver and every angle of everything is that if you're on a water, I mean, it's the ocean. You can't control it. Right. Or are they going to do it in shallow water? Cause if you do it out in the ocean, like the thing could just like shift two degrees and couldn't that just ruin the whole launch or am I overthinking it? Well, I think you're making two false assumptions. One that it will, okay. that it will shift too much. Just think about like oil rigs that have these giant drills, you know, with, a spinning drill bit going into the earth. Those are on a floating lawn or floating sea platform, but mm-hmm. they're anchored, you know, but they're, mm-hmm. they are floating, um, but they tether them down. I, I am assuming this would be almost the exact same type of thing, but also the actual shifting of it, you know, a rocket can actually really easily compensate for that. Cause as soon as it takes off, you know, it's all internal. Oh, okay. and it's not like you have to point it exactly where it needs to go. And if you miss by a little bit, you're going to miss the moon. You know, it's not like you're aiming a, a cannon, Got you know, it. it is guided the entire way through and and correcting for any misalignment. So actually, a rocket would take off. I mean, relatively, you know, obviously, if it's like 20 degrees or something, you're going to have a real problem. But a few degrees that a rocket would compensate for it immediately. And, God, you know. yeah, that's that's what I wasn't sure of, because it seemed a little bit to me of like, uh, I'm not sure how <laughs> stable that'll be. And, and maybe, yeah, maybe it's more. I've never been on an oil rig, so maybe, I, you know. But every even the biggest like I would have been on a cruise liner and that thing is still mm. like freaking rocket man those things right. are you know giant yeah 
Um, no, but to, and then to answer your second part of the question, this actually has been done before. Um, oh. There was the um, Odyssey launch platform. There's a company called Sea Launch. Oh, this wasn't even. This isn't even the one I'm thinking. Oh, this is right. Yeah, Sea Launch, which was an orbital launch platform. Um, I don't remember. If, here's the funny thing. I don't remember if it actually ended up launching anything. If it was, it was a small, like a pretty, pretty small launcher. Um, there was a. Oh, here we go. The launch failures. The launch failure. Yeah. Oh, but they were launching Zenits successfully launched demonstration into geostationary transfer orbit so yeah there we go it um it at least did one <laughs> but um yeah it, it didn't really get much use it i think it's still sitting out actually out there in the what's the port like long beach port or whatever um sure. yeah long yeah beach has a bunch. yeah um i think it's still sitting there when you cross the bridge you can you can see parts of it or something and um yeah, it was a that was an offshore sea launch platform, and it again it has the the advantage that there's a few advantages. Um, the, I mean, logistically, it's a little more challenging. You have to get a rocket out to this launch platform, get it up on top of this launch platform. You know, all of the things that you would normally do on land, you're now doing by boats, which just you need a sea crawler. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> imagine what that could look like. Yeah, how are you gonna get it out there? Yeah. Yeah, I'm sure they'll they'll roll it out horizontally. We have aircraft carriers. I'm sure we can. <laughs> Although they how just, big? Yeah, aircraft carriers are huge. Yeah, aircraft carriers are huge. Yeah, you could you could pretty easily. I mean, they're not going to use an aircraft carrier, but like, yeah, they could pretty easily <laughs> yeah. use a, a Starcraft carrier. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, probably uh, just a cargo ship is fine. You don't need like this incredibly advanced <laughs> yeah. war machine. Right. Um, but you know, then they could pick it up with cranes and, and do all the stuff that they're, you know, going to be doing basically, but it definitely brings up some logistics, but the good thing is, you know, if it's out of water, you have no shortage of water deluge system cause you can suck it up from the sea and spray your platform with it and stuff like that. So that's, that's easy. Um, you obviously don't have to worry quite as much about, um, some of the other like acoustic treatments and stuff like that. It, it because again, yeah, water dampens, um, yeah, and then you just don't have to worry so much about being near populated areas. Um, you can put it into a little bit better flight corridor if it's far enough away, because that's one of the funny things about Boca Chica. It has this tiny flight path that you can actually take to get to orbit, where you miss Florida, mm. and you miss all these like little Caribbean islands, and there's just this little, tiny, narrow narrow corridor. So they have a very limited thing. So if you kind of move to sea launch platform, you know you can kind of open up a few more possibilities that otherwise wouldn't really be... Um, you know, plausible, but yeah. So just to just to clarify, are we just talking about doing like the port to port or point to point travel around the world, or is this like where they would be launching satellites into orbit and stuff? I think they're because thinking... if it's just the satellites, why not just use a regular launch pad like everybody else? I think because of the noise. I think it's it's going to be that big of a deal. I I've but said I'm just that for saying a there's time. already an infrastructure there. But here's the thing. I know that Elon at the last presentation even showed a super heavy booster at, at Boca Chica. I just don't see that happening because it's five miles, eight kilometers away from South Padre Island. Uh, and, yeah. you know, think about how this, the space shuttle and the Saturn V were blown out windows like 20 miles away. Mm -hmm. There are hotels made out of glass, basically, on South Padre Island. And this will be a louder rocket probably, you know, and I, I just can't imagine that they, that they would be able to get permission to launch from there for the full, full stack. Now I think they'll do full all up, you know, the, the big testing of, of the starship prototype and stuff like that, like they're doing now, you know, the, the hops and the 20 kilometer hops and all the things that they basically said they're going to do before they go to orbit. Sure. Do that with the little rinky dink, you know, kind of test bed that they have in Boca Chica. But yeah, I think they're pretty much, I, I mean, maybe Kennedy Space Center, they'll still do su a super heavy stand and still launch from super heavy from Kennedy Space Center, especially for like crude launches and stuff like that. It, it might still make sense, but I think for like normal satellites and stuff, I think they'll just go from a sea launch platform. Hmm. Yeah. I'm just wondering <laughs> if that adds complexity or reduces complexity, you know? I think there's some more logistics, you know, you can't have your factory right there you know because right now at poker they just drive they rollerblade it down the road basically you know and <laughs> like there you go done <laughs> and if they're yeah. building uh 
more stuff in Texas, then potentially there's could be some crossover there because if they're going to have that Gigafactory Texas or whatever. Terra Although Factory. That's ter- oh, excuse me. It's bigger in Texas. Uh-huh. <laughs> Although I guess that's not SpaceX, but um, I wouldn't be shocked if, you know, because cause like where SpaceX is now in LA, that's also where the Tesla Design Studio is. Like you have a lot of Elon's things coalescing right yeah, there. Cross, mm-hmm. Cross-pollinating. Yeah, w- wouldn't be surprised if you, you know, whenever Terra Factory, whatever happens near Austin. Although Austin is pretty far from Boca Chica, right? Yeah, it's still... Like you're like still a, you're still a California away. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I think Austin. I think Austin to Boca Chica is probably further away than like San Francisco to to L.A. You know. Uh huh. Yeah. Yeah. yeah that, that's only five hours. Oh, then way. For, I'm I'm pretty sure it's eight hours. I mean, it'd be oh, it'd yeah. be downtown San Diego to downtown San Francisco, San Francisco, including traffic, basically. You know. Yeah, that's far. Yeah. Considering yeah. right now they go from Reno, Nevada to san francisco which is only like well in a car is only like a couple hours yeah so oh man um should we keep it it, i mean it's cool i'm a little again the part of me that's sad is that we might not be able to have crowds of people along the beach witnessing the biggest rocket ever fly you know um yeah i mean they the good thing is say it say it's even 10 miles you know 15 miles i just hope that they don't do it so far away that you physically can't see it you know, like, please just make it so at least you can see, you know, see it still on the just horizon. See like that. a little, a little light, you know, <laughs> I'm going to at least the good thing is, it, you know, this is a 35 story tall building, basically. So you will see it from a, a very long ways away. You know, it, it won't fall over the horizon for quite a ways, you know, a good 15 miles or so. But uh, yeah, <laughs> it just would still make me kind of sad. But get a boat whatever. Awesome. Yeah. Hey guys, thanks so much for watching this clip from our show. If that's just not enough for you and you want to watch the full episode, you can go to olfpod.com slash YT. And if you want more from us, you can consider becoming a Patreon member. You'll get early access to episodes. You can join our awesome community. You can actually watch us record live and get your name in the credits by going to olfpod.com slash Patreon. So thanks, everyone, for watching. Check back every Friday for new clips here and new episodes on the main channel. Thanks, everybody.